Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. This is your host, Doran Aldana, coming at you with another kick-ass episode. And today we got a very special episode with the one and the only Kelly Charney as my guest. And uh, she is a mortgage professional that has been around the block, not her first rodeo. And uh, she's had some rather extraordinary breakthroughs in her business as of late. And I wanted to just bring her on and have her share a little bit about her story as to what really made the difference for her in her business that catapulted her to such kick-ass results. She went from 1 million a month kind of inconsistently to 2 million a month consistently in literally three months. So definitely unprecedented breakthrough kick-ass results. And I wanted to have her share her story. So Kelly, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Doran. Um, pleasure to be here. And yeah, I'd love to share my story and a little bit of my background. Um, I've been in the mortgage industry uh, 16 years this month, uh, actually. Um, wow. Bonafide Sucker for Punishment Club right there, sweetheart. Probably, <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> Glum for punishment, for sure. But um you know, uh, even in the recent years that uh, markets picked up and um, doing a lot of the same things, um, really just just getting out there and beating the bushes and, and developing, having some good relationships for sure and um, trying to make them as fruitful as possible was uh, uh, just, challenge. it's always been challenging and then and ever increasing challenging, especially more competition in the marketplace. So. Absolutely. So before we get into the challenge and some of the frustrations you faced before we linked up, maybe you can just share a little bit about uh, your background, where you reside, um, what you like to do for fun, family life. Just give a little background because I know you're, you're, you've got a kind of a unique uh, interest outside of uh, your mortgage business that's really, really cool. And uh, your uh, your mom too. So maybe just share a little bit about that as well, so people can connect with who you are on a personal level. For sure, most definitely. Um, so I'm in. Uh, I reside in Orlando, Florida. Um, pretty much a Florida native. Uh, I was born in New York, um, right right out actually in Queens. So um, spent my young years there, but pretty much went to uh, grade school, high school, UCF, go Knights here at uh, Orlando. And um, we love it because, um, well, Florida, people think uh, just all the retirees come here. Not a true right? story. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do, and there's a lot more than just Mickey Mouse, of course. We've got a lot of natural uh, wonders and, and beauty. So, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Central Florida, so I'm uh, about 45 minutes to the East Coast and about an hour and 15 minutes to the West Coast. It's a great location um, to be in. We love it. And um, I'm married, two kids, uh, two and five. Uh, they're they're my second full time job. <laughs> so, Absolutely yeah. beautiful kids. Yeah, and um, I've got an incredible spouse. Uh, uh, she's incredibly supportive of, um, of of everything I do. And one of my passions, my largest passion, and uh, very competitive is um, motor racing. So um, I started uh, sports car racing. Uh, almost a decade ago. Um, wow. Yeah, almost um, you know nine, ten years ago, and um, got into. I, I was uh, always interested in uh, uh, you know adrenaline-filled uh, activities, so to speak, and speed. So it was an for speed. <laughs> And uh, if anyone's been on your Facebook, they know that uh, you have a preference between the varietals of speedy race cars. I see you got a Porsche on there. That's a pretty sexy whip. So yes. yeah, that's my baby right there. So um, love, uh, so yeah, the love of uh, speed and also competition and, and, and driving. Um, when I was little, I, uh, when I was about 11 years old, I got a, a go-kart and I loved it. I drove the wheels off of it. Um, and um, a little bit later in life, when uh, when I got my second car, a friend of mine was like, "Hey, you're pretty good at this. Why don't you come uh, to the racetrack?" So um, that was that was the beginning of uh, of all of this. And uh, went to the national championship here last year. Uh, competed on a national level while running a mortgage business full time. 
uh, having a family, relationship, children, household. So a lot to juggle. And um, yeah, I wouldn't do it any other way. So That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you've got an extraordinary story in more ways than one. Uh, coming off the racetrack to the mortgage business to trying to get your business to that next level in speed and power and firepower and income. So tell us about, you've been in the game 16 years. It's uh, obviously been a lot of ups and downs, so lots of changes over the last 16 years. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the challenges you were facing before we linked up, you know, some of the, the frustrations, the stress points, the pain points that you were facing uh, before we linked up that really inspired you to uh, step up your game with our systems and our coaching? Most definitely. So um, I was actually uh, seeking uh, some fresh new, um, you know, marketing and um, just some, some new fresh air to be able to implement into my uh, business. Um, but ultimately, the, the biggest challenges were um, having semi-exclusive relationships with certain um, referral partners, um, uh, attaining gaining relationships from others, um, really uh, uh, being able to squeeze all the juice out of my uh, database, um, mm -hmm. another big one. And then, um, of course, all of the other uh, mechanics within um, the mortgage uh, industry, as um, um, anyone that's listening will know, there's so much that, that's involved in every transaction that growing business and operating business, uh, doing those simultaneously can be overwhelming. So there was that bit of overwhelm uh, that came into play. And then mm -hmm. with um, you know not working 50, 60 hours a week plus, to achieve all of that, so um, that's where I was. I've 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 been I've had some very high years. I've had some mediocre years uh, in production. Um, generally speaking, I felt like I was pedaling faster than the um, success that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. I was ready for um, uh, uh, potentially an easier way to make this uh, come together because I. I've really worked hard to be the very best on the racetrack and then off the racetrack, um, you know, in my mortgage uh, business itself. Yeah. To use the race car metaphor, it sounds like you were revving really high, you know, 8,000 RPM or whatever it was, but you weren't getting the power. You weren't getting the juice from all that gas you were burning and all that, you know, so-called potential pent up power that you had at your disposal. It wasn't showing up in torque and power and speed. And you're kind of just making a lot of, uh, a, a lot of noise, but you weren't really going to the speed and, and uh, getting the results you want. Is that a fair assessment? That's pretty accurate right there. Absolutely. Right. You, you can really relate to that metaphor. <laughs> yeah. So then we linked up. And I think we linked up in August, if I recollect, some, sometime right. in August of 2018. And what kind of solution did we bring to the table? And uh, tell us about kind of for people that are listening for the benefit of the audience. Oftentimes there's fear, there's skepticism, there's resignation, there's you know trigger shyness from investing in other programs that didn't pan out a lot of disappointment, a lot of frustration with, with big promises that don't deliver. So tell us about what was that like for you to invest in yourself, be on the precipice of investing in yourself. Um, what did you, you know, what did you see in terms of the opportunity, but also what did you see in the fears, the skepticism that you kind of would naturally feel as you're about to pull the trigger on making a big investment and creating a breakthrough in, in your, in your business. Tell us about that. Right. Um, so first and foremost, what I uh, what I personally saw in um, in what you offer in your program you put together, uh, mind you, I've looked at a lot of the other options. I, I've had some experience with some of the other options out there. Um, I would say two big mortgage coaching and, and marketing um, uh, organizations. Um, one's very old school. The other one, uh, they're a big group. Um, they do probably an okay job, but what really, really um, 
uh, the old school method, uh, when you, we, we're new school, not old school anymore, especially with the majority of homeowners. Now we're going to be working with a lot of millennials, right? So yep. um, technology forward. So quite simply, the systematic approach that you guys um, have and that you took, that you take, uh, along with the um, heavy utilization of technology and um, not just um, uh, the simple pounding the pavement old school methods. Um, mm. There's some of those um, fundamentals, of course, that are important, but um, what I saw is the, the, your structure and what it brought to the table covered all, covered all the bases, but also um, with a fresh new way of thinking about um, approaching growing the mortgage business. Itself. And how did you feel? Obviously, you're looking for something fresh, uh, something cutting edge as opposed to bleeding edge, something innovative as opposed to old hat, something that gave you some you know, accountability, structure, support, systems, a systems based approach as opposed to, you know, just going out there and pounding the pavement, smiling and dialing and inflicting yourself with the hell of cold calling every Monday to, to realtors, you know, the old school militant Monday method. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously that was an allure, but still, you know, uh, we're not a $40 ebook. You know, we're a champion level investment that comes with uh, a champion level mindset required to make that investment. Tell us about how you felt as you're about to pull the trigger and, uh, and, and take the plunge. Was there fear? Was there doubts? Was there a tad bit of hoping and maybe a tad bit of like, holy crap, what am I doing? Tell us about that. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, if you there isn't a, a, a little ounce of doubt or a little uh, uh, a little bit of fearfulness either uh, to not succeed or maybe to succeed above your expectations, right? Um, then um, I, I don't think you'd be normal. But to, yeah, those definitely existed with uh, with me, and um, I had to prepare myself for. Um, First of all, having an open mind to to learn and to um, learn a new method, a new system, perhaps, or to mm. change some of the things that I was doing, keep what's working well, and change some of the things that aren't. And mm. um, engaging uh, in the process uh, definitely took a commitment. So I'd say uh, I took myself back and said, all right, if I'm going to engage in this, uh, just like a training regimen, if anyone's played um, sports, of course, sports are often compared, uh, even motorsports, um, training for uh, the implementation or, or training for a big event or a game or a competition. Uh, I took that kind of mindset. I thought, all right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, time block and make sure that I can schedule this in with my existing mortgage uh, business with my relationships with my kids with all the other responsibilities and auto racing as a part-time career um, I had to prepare myself for that and even though I had some you know some doubts I was like all right is this gonna work or is it not gonna work and um, you know when you have a great platform and a great system uh, in place for me it was about uh, being able to implement it and even if I took ninety percent of that away uh, with me and was able to implement it positively, I was working towards something that I knew was a. Um, that I, I once I got in and I saw, okay, here's our systemization. Here's what we're doing with time management. Here's what we're doing with all these, you know, um, important, you know, uh, working very uh, rich and deep, as you've mentioned. But it's very true. We're working with a smaller group of people. But very, uh, you know, very uh, involved and invested, uh, invested with each other um, to succeed. So once I was able to dig into that and put my, you know, get my hands dirty a little bit, I, um, I just started running with it and just taking it. What's wonderful, it's step by step, of course. So taking to step one and moving to step one, to step two. Um, yeah, there's always the doubt. There's always going to be, is this going to work or am I ready? Uh, and you know what I said? I had a conversation with my spouse. I'm like, look, I don't know if I'm ready for this, you know, because I've already got so much on my plate. So what I need to do is, you know what, just do it. Just do it and just make time for it. 
because if you don't do it, then you're not going to, you're not going to do it. It's all, there's no, I, there's a good analogy. Um, to having children, there's no perfect time for having children. Right. You just do it and you make it. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you're not financially stable ish, or, you know, have a good vision of your financial future. Um, but there's no hundred uh, percent certainty. So, um, and there never is. So just, um, yeah, just do it. That was, that was her words. Uh, and, um, that's it. That, that's I love it. it. As, as St. Nike says, just do it. And, yep. uh, unfortunately just doing it in business is a little bit, uh, more challenging or a little bit uh, less pleasurable than just doing it to make babies. You know, they're a heck of a lot easier to make than to raise. As you probably noticed, I have four kids. So that's been certainly my experience. They're a lot easier to make than to raise. But uh, your your analogy is very true. If we knew all that was involved in raising even remotely healthy kids and not pulling all our hair out in the process, most of us would not uh, even get close to the idea of pulling the trigger on something like that. As as pleasurable as the process of making babies is, most of us would definitely not even consider the the time, the energy, the money, the sacrifice, the sleepless nights that it takes to raise a healthy family. But like anything, to whom much is given, much is required. And this is certainly the case here. And in so many things, if something is uh, you know, meaningful and worthwhile, chances are it ain't going to be easy. And this is certainly no exception. So tell us about the before and after. Um, now we're looking backwards after, you know, three months of execution and now a few months of uh, ramping things up on that execution. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what's happened. You know, where were you before you got started and where are you now? And tell us about kind of the before and after statistics that uh, you've seen over the last few months. Right. And um, just for starters, um, I, like most in the industry, um, had a little bit or had a good bit of a, a roller coaster. You had your peaks and your valleys. And, um, you know, it's like, all right, when you repeat that peak, well, that's what becomes challenging is the, is to do that uh, in itself and repetitively and without devoting uh, your entire life to work. Um, I have a motto. I don't work to live. I, I uh, well, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't live to work. I work so I can live, right? So, yes, yes, amen. But, um, but that being said, where I was before I had um, these, you know, the, the spring time, for instance, the spring home buying season was, was fantastic into the summer, really strong. And then typically we have a slowdown um, end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, and especially going into the holiday season um, in Florida, um, the majority of my business isn't, uh, isn't snowbirds. You know, but um, you know, everyday people with kids that go to school, and that's why the spring and summer is really strong. So, um, that being said, my biggest challenge was to be able to have consistency. I think that's the mm -hmm. number one challenge. I'm sure um, no one else listening or watching to this has ever experienced that challenge. They, they probably have a hard time imagining what that's like to struggle with consistency. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I imagine. Uh, try as they may, they can imagine that it's possible for someone in the mortgage business to have that challenge. So tell us what, Actually, what, yeah. where did you come from and, and what kind of results did you create over this, the last three, three or four months in terms of, so in terms of consistency? Yes, yeah, statistically. And I mean, I took a look at all my numbers for 2017 versus 2018 as well. Uh, a direct comparison um, going back here, even a couple of years, and, um, you know, where I had uh, my, my peaks were these very strong uh, million and a half to close to $2 million months once or twice a year uh, in the spring or summer buying season. Um, as soon as the holiday season was upon us, boom, things really got quiet. Things really right. slowed down. And it's just a, it, was a, it was a regular thing um, where I wouldn't break, um, wouldn't break a million going into the uh, in the holiday season in our in our October November December typically um, 
So this year, what I was able to do is take um, the average, which I previously looked at, which was like an $845,000 a month, you know, a $450,000 a month, a $700,000 a month in the, in the um, holiday season, and change that into a $1.5 million a month, a $1.7 million a month, and then into a $2 million a month. Um, nice. Right at 2.96. So. Wow, that's for January. For that's for December, and then January we are based on what I have on the books and on the board. Um, we're, we're we're at a two million dollar month right there. So. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's completely changed. Uh, I haven't. It's changed my stress level uh, during the holidays because that's the worst time to have slow months in business regardless, right? Yeah. Christmas. Business and like, income goes down, personal income goes, or personal expenses go up. That's a bad combination, right? right? Pretty much, most definitely. And, you know, this holiday season, I said, you know what, no matter what, I'm taking off um, the time between Christmas and New Year's, and I took 10 days off. Um, Beautiful. Almost exclusively, I took I, I answered one text and, and did one phone call, but that's it. You know, to me, that's off. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was able to take ten days off, um, spend time, you know, with things, you know, with the important things in my life and family, and and uh, did like four road trips around Florida. It was great. So um, amazing. So you you went from inconsistent to building a consistent pipeline of a million and a half, two million last month. Was it 2.9 million? Is that what I heard you say? The last month was 1.96. It was like right 1. at- 1.96. This month we're around 2 million. Yeah. So again, that's that consistency where the pipeline keeps cranking, keeps building. You got to take 10 days off, even though you're doing double what you did last year or historically this time of year. You were able to do double plus scale back your workload and work 10 days uh, or take, take, take 10 days off for Christmas. So obviously game changer in terms of consistency, peace of mind, what would you say is the biggest difference that's made a difference for you in building that consistency? Maybe give us the top one, two or three things that's really been the difference that's made the difference for you in building that consistency and that growth. Whew, the difference has made a difference. I would say number one is um, being able to use um, what you have taught in being able to change my mindsets on my business um, and not just being in the more, not just being the best loan officer, the best loan originator, best mortgage advisor. Um, uh, not just being the one that people turn to for, you know, um, all their scenarios, including very challenging scenarios. Um, and I thought that was the most important thing before. And it is. And I have a very you know, good reputation, great reviews out there and, and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, good word of mouth. Right. Super mm -hmm. important, of course. But being the best uh, at the actual um process at the product at the, in, in the service being the best in this in this particular service industry that's important but the, the number one thing that changed for me was uh, being able to change my mindset um, of working on my business and taking a systematic approach to working on my business um, yes. well, that led me to number two <laughs> and number two is to be working with the right people um, and I've worked with, um, I would say, uh, probably over two dozen different referral partners, um, which half of them were the wrong referral partners who really focused my time on for one reason or another. But to be able to focus on the right ones uh, in that group and to develop some other fruitful relationships with additional partners that can then, um, you know, that, you know, to be great is one thing, but I think I believe to track greatness, you have to be great first, um, right? So um, 
getting, you know, you can be great. We got to get all your ducks in a row and it helped me get my ducks in a row. Uh, I would say number three is all of the, um, you know, time management, um, you know, the people talk about block scheduling, blah, blah, blah. But, but what happened is, um, one morning I'd wake up and I'm like, all right, you know, this is a wonderful day. I'm on, on point. I'm on my A game, right? Super productive day. I got, you know, two days worth of work done in one day. The next day, got a kind of a slow start. Things aren't maybe the best or had, <laughs> you know, some issues with the kids or some, 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 you know, so whatever it could be some stress with a stressful client, a stressful mortgage situation, uh, uh, so, you know, somebody didn't do something that they said they were going to do. And now, you know, you're the one figuring out the problem, you know, figuring out the solution for this problem. And you're kind of bummed that day. Well, I've been able to, thankfully, with a lot of the mindset work, again, going back to number one, um, is to create, create that, um, that A, uh, on point um, state of mind every day. Or yes. at least I'm at an A plus, I'm at a solid A minus, at the worst, a B plus. You know, um, and to be able to keep my eye on the prize and say, yep, I can do this, and here's how we're doing it, and go back to that. So to, um, you know, make my, you know, make the plan and work the plan moving forward. So. Well, there's a lot that you've unpacked there. I'd like to highlight a few. One of the things you kicked off with and was a golden thread in the whole three golden nuggets you shared was mindset, mindset, mindset. And you unpacked it, and there's a lot more, of course, if we had more time, we could unpack. But uh, anytime we see movement without, we always see a precursor of movement within. That's always the prerequisite. If we want movement without, we're always gonna need to focus on creating movement within in terms of seeing ourselves as successful, seeing ourselves as a top producer, seeing ourselves as being worthy of success, capable of success, feeling the victory in advance, reveling in it in advance. And obviously that's a big piece of what you've been talking about is you've been taking time daily to work on yourself first. It's kind of like your race cars. If all you do is just grind those race cars hard, hard, hard every day and you don't retool them and put oil in them and do an engine rehaul and tune them up and keep them running like a finely oiled machine, eventually they're going to be on the side of the road building smoke out of the hood, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then and so you're, drive you're, you're to keep yourself tuned up physically and um, mentally to be able to compete behind the wheel. Um, I can use that same analogy in business and in my mortgage business. Uh, to keep myself physically on point and then keep my mind in it. So when I when I get in um, uh, before a big race, before almost any race, but um, most definitely any big race, the championship race, um, that I, I raced at Indianapolis Motor Speedway last year. Wow. So, That's epic. A year ago, and um, what I would do is I'd sit in the car, close my eyes, and put my hands on the steering wheel, and feet placed properly on the clutch and the, and, uh, the throttle and the brake pedal, and sit there and visualize the racetrack through my head. And I'd go through every corner, and every corner as if it was an optimal, perfect, perfect lap, or you know everything was executed. Um, perfectly. And right. that's the key. And I've been able to, and, and I would take that and then visualize the finish line and visualize finishing in first. Who's going to visualize themselves finishing in last? I don't know, but you don't want to do that's that. That's called worry. That's called worry. That's called anxiety. That that's is called exactly. a misuse yeah. of the gift of imagination. When we misuse this gift, to imagine the worst case scenario instead of the best case scenario. And that's what we do unknowingly to try and prevent ourselves from something negative to happen. We actually attract it to happen. If we imagine ourselves moving into that wall or we're afraid of hitting that wall, what do we do? We tend to move towards the wall, right? We go where we look. And that's the saying in racing, yep. you go where you look, for sure. Yep. So 
um, same thing to visualize and to go where I'm, you know, looking uh, in business and in my mortgage business has been has been crucial. And um, just putting that mindset work together, um, as well as making sure that I've got a top notch morning um, success conditioning routine uh, put yes. together for myself. Uh, now I can share that with my, you know, with others that are successful that I want to keep around me, you know, so, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, you know, inspire them and um, be a partner for them and do all that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's full circle, you know, but um, you definitely, you most definitely go where you look. I, I uh, there's one time I was going through this corner, I looked at the wall, boom, guess where I was? I was touching that wall the next thing. Because a little too much throttle, the tail gets a little um, uh, wiggly. You know, it whack like it'll oversteer, yeah. and boom, that's not where you want to be. <laughs> so, and and I imagine the price point of those vehicles, you don't want to be touching the wall. Uh, yeah, not to mention yeah. your own well-being at stake. Yeah, it's so, not a not a video game. We can't push the reset. No, no. So lesson learned there, and I imagine that there are people listening and watching that have been in athletics, maybe they played football or basketball or golf or whatever their game is. How much do you think competitive sports and being a competitive sports gives someone in the mortgage business an advantage uh, in their, you know, in taking their business to the next level? Do you think it's a meaningful, a significant advantage or not so much? I think it can be an advantage if you have that, the experience of competitive sports although not necessarily um, in a, a definitive advantage. Um, I, I know others that are I've never competed in sports that are amazing in the mortgage business and uh, may, you know, amazing in growing their business. So uh, it can definitely be an advantage because of some of the fundamentals that we're taught or that we have, that you have to be, it, sometimes we're just naturally competitive right mm -hmm. uh, and then find those solutions to get better to improve um then yeah uh, that can be an advantage for sure uh, but not i was saying not not necessarily uh because if you follow a system you do this and then you do this and then you do this equals this boom that's that's it so if you can just be accountable for yourself to do that then, then you'll get there that's really about taking what sports psychologists have been preaching for years to elite athletes, you know, what, visualize that perfect form, visualize that perfect performance and continue to revel in the glory of victory in advance with a perfect uh, biomechanical delivery or whatever that specific sport entails. And you're going to see a lot more success than if you imagine failure and embarrassment and humiliation and defeat. And same applies here. So applying those same principles, whether you have been in sports or not, whether you've been an athlete at a high level or not, we can apply these same principles to winning in business. So tell us about your new partners, because you talked about how you stopped just taking anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror who calls himself a realtor and you started to be more selective and more deliberate and more strategic about attracting the right partners. Tell us about some of the partners you've attracted over the last few months using our system and the difference that's made to your business. Yes, most definitely. So I had, um, I went through a process of uh, eliminating anyone that wasn't um, a fruit, you know, a fruitful relationship uh, or had any negative energy or drama Anything in that um, in that realm? Nope. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so, right. Honestly, I mean, we work. Uh, you know, we spend so much, spend the majority of our time, um, you know, working, and you gotta gotta do business with people that you like and enjoy working with. I I, I feel first and foremost. So what mm -hmm. I was able to do is I was able to determine, um, you know, with your help and and the systems. All right. Who should I continue working with, and who who needs who needs to be um, you know uh, who doesn't need that attention if they still hang around? And um, you know, I've got some people to send me onesie twosie business here or there, and that's fine. And I've got 
some automated processes and touch points for them, but I don't personally go far out of my way or out of my way to engage with them. So what I've, what right. I've done is I've, I've um, been able to weed, the, weed them out that weren't being as fruitful. And um, I've engaged, for instance, uh, one of the number one uh, top 100 agents in Orlando, I think running seven years. Amazing. Um, Engage them with uh, with everything, and then also was, I was able to bring them so much more. On, I want to touch on this value, being able to bring value to your referral partner more than hey, I'm going to make this flyer for you, or or we're going to do a co cool marketing, you know, just sold card campaign. Yeah, okay, right. you know that everyone knows about that stuff. No big deal. That's great if you can do that, but a lot more value than that. Being able to help them be interested in their business and know uh, more more so the very key points to identify what they need help with in their business. So I've actually brains just through the through our through that process of determining what what they need work on in their business, I've been able to have them open up saying, wow, no one's ever ever asked me or no one's ever, you know, th th these are points that I never even thought about. So thank you so much for bringing these up and then have the conversation of how they're going to be able to not work with the other mortgage lenders that they've, you know, had a, pre had a relationship with in the past or previously worked with, you know, so those are the good conversations to have. So, um, but I picked up, yeah, the, uh, the one, uh, one downtown Orlando agent, um, that's killer where we're meeting in person, but also uh, I have a virtual way of meeting with them. Which I gained through um, through your help as well, and um, awesome. I developed I developed a relationship two hours away on the west coast. Um, the relationship was okay when we were able to talk on the phone and um, get started. And I said I identified them as okay. They're one. They're they're one over one hundred. They closed over one hundred units last year, wow. and they're going to close over one hundred and forty units this year. And they have a you know structured business plan. Uh, they are you know they they run a tight ship, but I was still able to bring value to them. Number one and number two, I was able to meet with them virtually, and um, and have a virtual meeting with them uh, for it was an hour long, and develop that relationship that I've got now ongoing. Um, they just sent me a lead here right just this past week. Um, awesome. Got two leads actually. There's there's one during the holidays and one there that were engaging, and now they've they've said, "Yep, well, I'm going to be working with you moving forward." And this is someone that's out of my direct market, so they're in a different city, different right. county, zip code. So I said, "You know, nothing's out of my reach. I can work anywhere in the world and do what I'm doing." That's amazing. A hundred transactions plus a year. Their goal for this year is 140. You didn't do a, a single face-to-face -face meeting with them. Everything was done through Zoom electronically through an online meeting system. Mm -hmm. And because of the kick-ass unique value you brought to the table, because of your mindset, because of your energy, because of the infectious, contagious positivity that you exude, as well as your kick-ass unique value proposition, you're able to bring them on as a partner they're already starting to send you leads and they have a goal to do 140 transactions this year you do the math on that even if you capture half of that that's putting a few more zeros and commas in your bank account 100 percent, yes so that's amazing yeah. and talk about setting yourself up not just to maintain the growth you've had which is essentially doubling your production but to be able to sustainably grow your production and to be able to do it in a way where it's all quality referrals that are the easiest to convert with less partners, not more partners, with less drama, not more drama. Yeah. I mean, how awesome is that? Super, super proud of you. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm super excited too because going, you know, developing a deep relationship, a loyal relationship, which oftentimes, sometimes is doesn't exist that often in, in the industry, you know? Um, mm -hmm. It's been and, and I've been able to create that loyalty um, from my referral partners 
with the um, you know with the value and the the service and expertise and then the value that I'm bringing to them. So yeah, that's beautiful. So let's say someone's listening or watching right now, and they're a mortgage professional, either a newbie or a veteran. And they're like you before we linked up, you know, they're struggling, they're spinning their wheels, they're frustrated. They're in the feast or famine up and down roller coaster ride, not knowing what's going to happen next. They're only as good as their last deal. They're worrying where their next deal is going to come from. Um, and they're right now on the fence thing. And this sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty awesome. You've done some pretty cool things. Uh, I wonder if this would work for me. I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of hype out there. I got crap in my newsfeed every single day on my Facebook talking about, you know, Facebook leads and this and that and the other, what makes this any different? Is this really legit? What would you say to someone like that? Who's kind of on the fence and wondering if this is something yeah. worth lo looking into? Well, um, first of all, it is, um, most definitely legit. <laughs> Um, for, and, and there's a, um, there's a qualifying process, I believe on both sides to engage, in, um, in, in your program and how much your program has to offer because it's, a, it, it takes dedication. You got to be dedicated to it. So there's a, I believe there's a qualifying aspect of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's also, Absolutely. you guys qualify, um, as, as, as we know. So um, the bottom line is, is that, you know, there's a lot of bits and pieces out there. Um, and just like the internet, there's a lot of information and misinformation. But mm -hmm. if you put all the, the correct and proven information and, and methods and uh and support and coaching and all of that together and um be able to implement that that's going to be the difference between this one little thing of the, one little piece of this puzzle that might you know that might work uh, for itself or for what it is but it's it's going to be one piece of this big puzzle um mm -hmm. so I feel is uh, you want to really like I felt like I had a bunch of pieces of this puzzle. I've got I had a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle before, and I had hundreds of pieces, right? And right. Um, maybe I had thousands of pieces. Some of the other pieces just didn't go with my puzzle, right? So <laughs> <laughs> um, that makes it challenging. <laughs> that makes it more challenging. So but when I had the majority of the pieces, we need to organize it, be able to fit it together, and and build that, you know make a picture out of it and then fill and fill everything in with all the, the, the stuff that works, the proven methods, the systemization, the, uh, the ways to be able to interact with them. You know, a, a, a client that I haven't spoken to for three years because neglected my database, right? Just, mm -hmm. just the proper way to be able to engage, re-engage them. Um, and, uh, just to all the little pieces that come, it, there, there's so much that's involved. I can't even speak of, more than just a couple tidbits right now, but yeah, just if you're on the fence of looking, I would, I would recommend to someone if hey, you know what, if you're um, if you're relatively new or a veteran and you're kind of on the fence of trying something to see if this little tidbit works or that tidbit doesn't work, that's not gonna ultimately bring you the success that you need, you know. And and you're gonna spend you're gonna spend a lot more time spinning your wheels, figuring out the other pieces versus going to a system that's already put together. It's proven with the team that, that will support you and other peers like myself. Um, but we're supporting each other, you know, which is great. So I've connected with Absolutely. a few good people as well. So I think that that's pretty much what it comes down to. And if you feel that you're you you know um, even potentially ready to take your business to the next level, then 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 you can pull the trigger and, and just stop thinking too much. <laughs> Don't think, don't think, don't think. Just do it, baby. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, I so what do you? I thought about it all a lot, but I just did it. I just, I said, all right, right. you know. Well, that reminds me of a question I often ask my clients when they're kind of on the fence and they're hemming and hawing. I ask them, I say, tell me one person that you really admire in the world that's either still living or that has now. Uh, met with the other legends of the ages, 
and someone you really admire that you would love to emulate who has the habit of indecision. And invariably, they're all like, I can't think of one. Well, mm -hmm. maybe there's a clue. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a clue. Successful people have learned to get the information they need to make a sound, intelligent, strategic decision. And then they strike while the iron is hot. They don't deliberate. They don't procrastinate. They take action. And you're a prime ex example of that, Kelly. So kudos to you. Super excited for you. What are you most excited about as you launch into this new season of your life and your business and this new year? What are you most excited about right now? Whew, um, I'm excited about, I'm actually excited about, um, you know, growing my business, with people that I love working with and systems that I know I've put into place that, um, that work when I'm not working, you know, and to mm -hmm. have more time and um and freedom as well as control um yes. because, you know the, the thing is i have control i'm super excited about being in control um and being that thermostat while i'm setting the temperature i'm setting yes. the temperature, like all right i, I don't mean you know the temperature's gonna be right here and i'm gonna keep it there you know so yes um, really excited about that and um you know moving forward to be able to I put systems into place, um, talk about growth and your business to a point, but just to be able to sustain that and uh, you know, having time for what matters most no matter what and not worrying about it. I love it. That sounds to me like a life, an extraordinary life built by design, filled with passion, purpose, right. and prosperity. True? Like Sasha, it's engineered. By design, yes. it's form over, it's function over form, and then it, it comes together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it just so happens that's our mission, to help mortgage professionals create an extraordinary life built by design, filled with passion, purpose, and prosperity. So I'm glowing inside. I'm smiling from ear to ear because that's exactly my heart's purpose and my heart's call to make a difference in people's lives in, that, in this way. It has nothing to do with mortgages. It has everything to do with helping you guys create an extraordinary life and live a life by design on your terms, not anyone else's. So super blessed to have the privilege to work with you and for you and be the catalyst for your breakthrough, Kelly. Super proud of you. And um, for those of you listening, watching, if you'd like to learn more about the secret sauce of what we've done with Kelly, to help her double her business in such a short period of time and really set her up to create a life by design and really kick ass at a high level with consistency as opposed to up and down like a yo-yo, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call. A call that was the launching pad for Kelly's breakthrough and that can be a launching pad for your breakthrough as well. It's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I encourage you guys to take advantage of one of those calls with either myself or one of my specialized breakthrough consultants and we'll lift up the hood on your business, no pun intended, Kelly, and we'll look at what's working, what's not working, uh, where you're at, where you'd like to be. If we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we will give you the prescription to do so as we did for Kelly. And if not, we'll be the first people to advise you to pass on our services. But either way, you're going to leave the call with more clarity than ever before, new distinctions, and uh, you'll be better equipped to kick ass in the new year and beyond. So thanks again, Kelly, for your time today. I, it's been a delight to hear about your story. And I know this is just the beginning. We ain't done. We've just begun, baby. So keep on rocking. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was um, great to be able to share my story. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. This is Dorn Aldana and Kelly Charney, and this is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast coming at you live. Go forth. Take massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you will get massive results. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.